Here I am at Web 2.0 in New York, and I am with the one and only Sean Power. And he and Alistair gave a fabulous uh, session boot camp today on analytics. Not only web analytics, but, and I'm not sure I know how to say this correctly, communal analytics. Communal analytics, a new term here in the social sphere. And so I wanted to talk to Sean really about ROI, about measurement, about marketing, about customer service, because one of the things I often get asked is, how do I convince upper management that this is a necessary thing, you know, of all the priorities that they have, how do, what is it that, that uh, you think is a compelling message to executive management to say, hey, we really ought to invest in this? So there are many um, advantages to having a social media presence um, from what marketers traditionally see as a new medium medium to be able to reach out to clients, but also a great platform for support, a great platform to crowdsource product management, a great way to limit liability uh, and mitigate risks by being present when something disastrous can happen, um, and also a great way of getting product feedback from existing customers so that you can hopefully upsell uh, and tailor your products so that they sell easier to markets that you've already segmented. And finally, a way to generate leads so that you can market or hopefully even acquire talent online. All of these things are great motivators that translate into making money for a business because they decrease costs for businesses to go and find leads or it increases revenue by creating better and more tailored products or increases customer satisfaction by being able to um, lower the support costs involved in answering millions of users, hundreds of thousands of users, by pushing the, um, uh, uh, the effort back onto the users who themselves are helping others. So I think there are many cases in each of those types of communities that have shown how much of a tremendous um, uh, increase in uh, fulfilling business goals and how much of a tremendous reduction in uh, costs and how much of an increase in customer satisfaction being on social media platforms can have. One of the things, though, that I hear is that, well, okay, so why don't we just use focus groups? Why don't we just use our traditional methods? And what's the correlation? It, customer service big time is the customer experience. So what, what we see often in the cloud um, at least from the customer service point of view, nobody's saying, um, marketing, you're sending me too many email messages, cut it out. What we see is comments like, your product sucks, uh, your company doesn't care about me, you don't understand me, you overcharged me, the product failed. So it's definitely the message is related to what customer service would traditionally deal with. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, but the issue there is that um, traditionally, customer service or the contact center has been seen as a cost center mm -hmm. and one of the reasons I think that customer service is so unsatisfying, the experience is so unsatisfying, is that companies don't spend the money because executives don't understand that customer experience does matter. Mm -hmm. How do you think garnering customer feedback, the voice of the customer via social media, could change an executive's perception? I mean, you and I believe that this is important but what would you say to an executive? Would you say sit down and type into twitter.com.search and search on your company's name, do a Google search um, with, you know, like some like fails or is bad? Like, mm -hmm. what do you think, how would an executive grok what you and I have come to understand? So there are two types of voice of the customer um, platforms that you can have. You can have voice of the customer on your own website where you can directly ask people, what do you think about our products? Or you can measure conversations or listen in on conversations um, on Twitter that are usually happening, uh, happening between two people that aren't involved in your organization or between one person who just wants to vent or one person who wants to sing praises about your product. And the ability to be able to search for certain keywords using um, Twitter's search functionality or to bring in multiple channels using social media listening platforms 
to understand what the sentiment of your community is is very powerful because in a matter of hours you can get an accurate pulse and dial on how people feel about your brand today and you can drill down in those feelings be it very positive or very negative to get examples of things that people like and things that people dislike about your product but sometimes it's not evident right saying something sucks is much less useful than saying i hate the fact that widget x on my product made me um, not be able to achieve function y or my laptop hinge broke or mm -hmm. right because sometimes and that's the question i get asked is because someone's upset, does that mean that, like, what do we fix? Mm -hmm. And so often, um, it's not enough just to be online and just to listen. So there are varying stages in building online communities that um, one can go through, um, and they give different levels of feedback. So you can join communities, um, or you can just, sorry, you can listen to communities. And so that's, to a certain extent, searching very passively and not interacting with the community at all. You can join them, and in this case, you have a presence, and you start interacting with them, so you can ask more specific questions. You can moderate communities, which allows you to have a little bit more of a presence. It psychologically gives you a little bit more clout, but also gives you the um, ability to stop or filter particular mentions. And finally, you can run communities. And that gives you full access to track um, mentions what people are saying through analytics. But most importantly, in all of these endeavors, sometimes it's not enough just to listen. And so sometimes you need to steer the conversation towards things that matter to you. So there are many great examples of self-service portals that have created customer advocacy groups within the self-service portals um, where they have a council of uh, councils or groups of members that used to be disenfranchised, that used to be um, unhappy, who have then been turned into brand advocates simply because they're super happy that the company is listening and interacting with them. So sometimes it's just as simple as listening. And then, then I think another level would be um, to actually change the product direction or, or change something that's not working. Would you agree with that? I think it's important to understand and baseline your community initially. And I think what's uh, then the next logical step once you've surveyed how your users feel about your product and if your users like your product in the first place is to pull on different analytic sources to be able to make um, product development, um, uh, um, to uh, like to be able to make um, decisions based on what your community is saying. So I think that um, voice of the customer is not alone, um, is not enough alone, but um, I think that it's important to look at the complete web monitoring picture, assuming that you have a product that's on the web, um, and pool on metrics like analytics and, and usability to be able to understand where to go further. And if your product isn't on Twitter, then um, at the very least, voice of the customer will give you a cheap way of being able to create an ad hoc focus group which can turn into a great customer advisory board that's great um thank you and um we're almost to uh 10 minutes here can you believe that wow. <laughs> went that fast wow. so i'm going to stop this and and uh we'll we'll do another one so thank you sean i really appreciate it and great. the name of your book is complete web monitoring with O'Reilly. Okay, let me make sure I can capture that. There we go. Is it in focus? Kind of. All right.